Hi everyone, welcome to WordCamp Belfast. Thank you for coming to my talk instead of the super techie debug one. Um, my talk is more aimed towards beginners today. And the reason for that is um, because I work for the support team at 34SP.com. And one of the most rewarding parts of that is speaking to these new people, new customers who are excited to learn about WordPress and we'll talk them through, help them with their websites, um, give them tips on what they can do with it. And it's really good to see them come back a few weeks, a few months later, and be completely converted into WordPress. Um, because it's a great platform and we're really enthusiastic about it. So I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about the basics of WordPress and help people get started. For anyone who might not be too sure what they're doing with WordPress, I'm hoping that this will give you a bit more confidence when using the dashboard. I'm going to talk through some po a couple of popular plugins. I'm basically going to be doing a talk about the kind of thing I do when I set up a website and the kind how I use the dashboard, the places I go, the things I set up. And yeah, I'm going to try and make it a bit interactive as well. So um, if I'm going to be changing something on the site, um, I'd appreciate your input, so if you would like a specific colour or something, let's try and make the website a little hideous, because it might be fun. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get to it. So, uh, I just wanted to talk about why I think new people building websites should choose WordPress over another platform. Um, it's really tempting when you're not too um, coded, like uh, you might want to go to one of these drag and drop style editors something like Weebly something where it's really straightforward drag and drop you've got a website that's really useful but I'd always no matter how basic your knowledge is I'd always encourage people to use WordPress and the reasons are here um, with a drag and drop builder depending where you go um, it can be really hard to kind of have full control over it you can't necessarily move it onto other hosting, depending where you get from. Um, you're a bit limited in what you can do. Some of the features of drag and drop builders need to be paid for. So if you want e-commerce, you sometimes need to pay a bit extra. Pretty much anything you want to do with WordPress, there's a free plugin for, more or less. Um, to be honest, even if there's a paid plugin, there's probably a free version. So yeah, WordPress is awesome. You've got access to all your code. Everything is yours. There's ultimate freedom with it and it's great and WordPress can do anything so any type of website you can imagine you can create with WordPress so you want a shop there's a plugin WooCommerce really popular you want a forum social media website re you want a website with reviews there's plugins specific for that um, any kind of website you can dream up you can create in WordPress and even if there's not a plugin which does the specific thing you need it to you can kind of get around that with some really <coughs> unique plugins which I'm going to mention some plugins which are really good for creating any kind of content at the end of the talk but yeah WordPress is awesome so to kind of sell you all on WordPress because it's going to be really hard to sell a WordCamp on WordPress um, I'm going to make a website with you guys. I've put a website up here, myradwebsite.co.uk. Um, you can visit that now. It's just got a basic install, but we're going to have a play with that website um, using the dashboard. I'm going to talk you through the dashboard and what I'm going to be doing to the site just to kind of hopefully get across to you how easy it is to use because, uh, bear with me a second, with the WordPress <coughs> dashboard, which this is where I'm going to go off into my other screen. So this is my website. I'm going straight into the WordPress website as if we've just installed it because most hosting companies will install WordPress for you. So you don't need to go through the setting up the database thing and setting yeah. it all up. Um, I thought I'd skip over that because that would be a good 10 minutes out of actually getting in and getting stuck into WordPress. And the dashboard You'll, what will happen once you set up a WordPress website is you'll have a home page that looks like this and you'll be able to log in by going to your website slash WP admin. I've got a bit of a unique setup so I've got the WP WP admin but what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to just create some content and go back to my slides just as my prompts to show you what I'm going to do. And yeah, we'll use this to make a website. So if I just go back over to my slides. Cool. I'm just going to talk you through some of the main points of the dashboard. So when you log into WordPress, this can look a little bit daunting. Um, this is something we get told quite a lot on support. If we're trying to get someone on, on WordPress who's really unsure about how to make a website, they can sometimes log in, see all this. They'll be used to their drag and drop editor and this can look a bit daunting. So I'm just going to talk through the main places where I <coughs> use WordPress. So when you log into WordPress, you've got your website and you, the main places you'll be adding content is your posts and your pages, which we're going to go through that shortly. Um, your appearance is anything to do with how, to, how your website looks. Plugins, we're going to go through installing some plugins. Users, you can add users. So I've got my admin user here. If I want to give access to someone else, I can add a user here and they can log in. I can give them different levels of permissions because mo in most cases we don't want to create too many admins. So if someone's going to contribute on your blog, you'd probably set them as an author. And we'll go through tools and settings and just explain what they do as well. So first thing we're going to do is change our theme. So if I just bring this up, I've just got the steps on how we're going to do that. So um, we're already logged into the site and we go to the appearance and the theme section to add a theme to our site. I'm just going to pick a nice basic one that we can have a bit of a play with. So if I go to appearance and themes, you get a screen like this. There's already some themes built in. If we want to add a new theme, we can click the little button at the top there and we've got access to all these different themes. And what I usually do when picking a theme is I usually go to the popular section because if they're popular, I kind of assume they look good and people are quite good at using them and they're quite easy to use. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I'm just going to change from the 2017 theme to the 2016 theme. So it's another default WordPress theme. You can get stuff a bit more exciting. You can do things like get a theme specific for a portfolio, an art website. Um, there's ones that are good for like classifieds and things like that and magazine type themes. You just basically, when you go to add new, you would type in a keyword, so something like magazine. And we get all these cool looking themes. But um, rather than go through a really complex theme um, for a short talk, I will just have a play with this theme. So when I install the theme, I clicked install and then activate. And then if I go back into appearance and themes, you'll see that I've got this theme activated. And if we go to our website, I've got a new theme there. So this theme looks a little boring to me. So I'm going to have a play with it. If I click on customize in the top menu here, or if you go back into your dashboard appearance and customize, you can find it there as well. This gives you access to change some of the basic appearance of your website. So let's have a play with the colors. Background color, that black's a bit boring. What color shall we go for? Bright yellow? Yeah, why not? That looks great. Pink, links. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, we'll leave the main text because we want it to be readable. OK. We might change that in a bit once we decide that we're being blinded by the bright yellow. But yeah, um, the customizer is really good for thing, for like, making small edits to your theme. Um, depending on the theme, you might have a lot more options in here. So because this is quite a basic theme, um, just got these options. You've got your, I can add widgets there, which we'll talk about. I can add a background image if I want. And you can add a header. Um, let's add a header. So if I just bring this uh, back here. I've got a little assets folder here, which is mostly pictures of dogs. <laughs> um, but if we, when going to add a header, there's an option to just add new image. And adding images to WordPress is super easy because you get given, wherever you're going to add images, you get given a page like this. 
where you can just drag and drop pictures in. So I'll just do that with this one. Yeah, that looks great. And then I can crop it. I want the dog's faces in. Crop image. And there we go. I've got a header on my site. That is a very blurry image, but <laughs> um, there we go. Shall we leave the header in or do we want it without a header? Header. Okay. We'll keep the puppy header. Good choice. <laughs> cool. So this is our website. Um, I know this is a poor, <coughs> poor example for the kind of website you'd probably want to put out on the internet, but you can quite quickly see how soon you can start customizing your WordPress website. Um, you can add your own brand type colors, create a header which isn't too blurry, but you can make this website your own quite easily with just a few basic um, changes in the appearance section. That's an example of our website. Going through customizing theme. These are more of my, my prompts, but we'll go through this. Cool. Next thing I'm going to do is create some pages. So I've created my website, and there's not really much in terms of content. I want to add some pages so I can tell people what my website's about and who I am and maybe add contact forms, things like that. So to do that, um, you'd go back into your dashboard and you'd go to the pages section. I'll be talking about posts and pages um, shortly about the differences, but for now I just want to set up a few quick pages so I can get menus set up and things like that, and I'll show you how to do that. So if we click on the pages area, there's two default pages, which I'm going to get rid of the sample page because I don't need that. Um, is Heather here? Is she going to be upset if I delete the privacy page? We'll leave that in. <laughs> cool. So if I add a new page, I'm just going to quickly add a few pages. Um, what kind of pages would we like? I'm going to add an about page from a website. And this, this interface here is fairly simple to use. Um, it's kind of like editing in a Word document. You can add your headers. So about, it will already have a header. So my name is and you can see that it kind of automatically formats. I didn't click anything. I set the header tag here, but then I made, done a space and it automatically reverted to the paragraph content. And again, you can add media in the same way you did before. You can drag and drop into this interface and it's really easy to use. If you do want to have a bit more of a play, there's a text editor where you can add HTML tags and things like that. Um, this will all change soon when Gu Gutenberg comes out, but um, for now, this is how we would um, customize our pages. And here we've got some settings. We can edit the visibility of our page. I'm going to make all these public, but you can have like a password protected section if there's a member login section, things like that, um, or some sort of page which you only want certain people to be able to visit. You can also set a featured image, which that's more to do with your theme. Um, depending on what kind of theme you've got, sometimes links to pages might have fancy images, things like that. You can set them. I'm not going to for this example, but be aware that you can do some pretty cool stuff with featured images as well. So it's worth setting them and looking at your site and seeing what it looks like. So I'll just publish my about page and I'm just going to add a couple more. I'll add a contact page. I'm also going to add a blog page, and I'll show you why in a second, and a home page. Cool. So I've added a bunch of pages here that I'm ready to set up. Um, if I look on my website now, you'll see that you can't really see any links to the pages. And if I go over to my slides, that's because we're going to create a menu for them. So. The menu section is for creating navigation for your website. And depending on your theme, it might do this automatically. Sometimes once you add a page, it automatically gets added into a menu that's set for the theme. But I'm going to create a menu myself because I want these links displayed on my site in a certain order. And this is the place I would go and do that. 
So, <coughs> if I go over to Appearance again, and then Menus, you get a page like this. And you can also have a live pre pre preview of it, but I personally prefer to do it in here. I'll just show you what the live preview looks like. Menus, view all locations, create <coughs> new menu. We're just going to do that in this page. So I'm going to create a menu, <coughs> call it Home Menu. Ooh, or call it Home Nebulous, apparently. Home Menu. And I'm just I created to my menu. That's not necessarily the order I would want them in. So, for example, I want my About page after my Home page. You can add them as sub-items, so they'll add to the navigation. You'll have your main navigation and maybe some little subheadings below them. So, I'm just going to make these all primary navigation. And then you can select locations of where you want your menu to turn up. I want it to be my primary menu. Depending on your theme, you'll have different menu locations. This, this is, a lot of this is very specific to what theme you will choose. But you'll have something like this, where you've got your menu section, and you can choose locations based on your theme. So if I save my menu and go back over to my website, you'll see now that I have this section here. I have my home, about and blog page. Now, the reason I've created a blog page, if we go to the main home page here, this is where my blog posts turn up. But I want to show you the settings section of the site, I believe is next. Yes. And you can, with the settings menu, this is where most of your um, core features of your website and main settings are held. So, for example, I've gone into settings and general here, and I can change the name of my website. Cool Word Camp Belfast website. Cool. So, you can change things like that. You can change the date format for your blog post, things like that. I'm just going to save that. The main thing I wanted to show here, which I think is one of, this is one of the main places I go when I set up a website because for most websites I create, I don't like having the blog posts on the home page as soon as you go in. Some people do. It depends on what you want your website to be, really. But um, what I prefer to do is I go to the reading section in the settings area and I always change the home page display from latest posts to a static page. And this is why I created that blog um, page before because now I can set a home page of home where I can write an introduction, welcome to my site type thing, and posts I can set to blog. And if I save that and go back over to the website, now you'll see my home page is blank. It doesn't have those posts anymore, so I can write an introduction here. And if I go over to blog, my blog will be here and subsequent blog posts that we might add will be added down here. And that's just a way I can customize how, I, how people interact with my website because I can now put something cool and different in my homepage. Just going to go back to the settings area just to talk about some of the other options. Um, you can set thumbnails for your media. I'd recommend not necessarily doing this unless you really know what you want from a thumbnail because most of these will be preset and your theme will take care of setting the right thumbnails for your website. So that bit I kind of breeze over. This is a really good area to be aware of. Your permalinks in WordPress, depending how depending on your setup, you might have plain permalinks set up. And what permalinks are is they're just the how WordPress writes the structure of your links. So mine was set to day and name. And if I go back over to my site and go to this, you'll see here at the top, maybe not be able to see it too well, but it's got the year and the month in the URL. In permalinks, you can change that. So I can change it to be, rather than having the day, I can just do post name. So it'll be my website, myradwebsite.co.uk slash the name of the post. So I'll save that, and it'll change that link for me. And yeah, that's, oh, 
I've just noticed the typo on the homepage name. <laughs> so I'll fix that because we care a lot about this website. There we go. Cool. So yeah, the settings menu is where you can edit most of the important parts of your website and how people interact with it and how they read your blog. Um, and it's really handy. So it's worth having a play around in there. Um, just be aware of changing URLs in the general section because if you're not too sure what you're doing, you can make the website go down. So it is worth being a little careful in that area. It's the only area in the dashboard where you can really cause a massive problem. But the options I've shown you through are perfectly fine to change to whatever you'd like them to be. Next, I'm going to show you creating posts. Uh, let's go back to that, actually, because I'm just going to talk about the difference between a post and a page, um, because in a lot of ways, they're very much the same thing. But WordPress has different options for posts and pages. And posts, when you post them, they're more in a blog style format. So they'll have a date assigned to them. Um, you'll be able to organize them by categories and tags and things like that. Pages, and the pages I created before, are more for um, main content, which stays the same. You can update it, um, but things that you want people to be able to easily access on the home page, you can create a page for, and it's static, doesn't have a date, won't get bumped down when you create more pages. And yeah, uh, that's kind of the diff That's just basically the difference. So I'm going to create a post. So if I go to posts, I will add a new post. And I have a little post here, which I stole off my own blog. And it's about another WordCamp. And it was about my, I think this one was about WordCamp London. Yeah, WordCamp London, woohoo. There we go. And I can paste that in and you can see the kind of things I can change here and assign to this um, blog post. So I can add categories. So I could have a category for word camps. I could have a category for uh, tutorials maybe. But I wouldn't necessarily add this as a tutorial. This is more me just talking about a word camp this post. So I'd assign it to that category. And then I can add tags. And this is good for your SEO. If you want to turn up on Google, you want to set some good tags. And it helps people find your content on your site when you're searching. So I can add WordCamp as a tag, WAPU, with commas. You don't need to do a space. If you add them, it'll separate them like that. So you can create your tags like that. And you can set a fe featured image again, which um, will come up nicely on your page. Shall we set a featured image? Let's use our dog picture from before. Publish that. And let's have a look what that looks like. So back to my homepage, blog section. And you'll see this WordCamp London post has my featured image there, my post content there. And I also have my categories and tags here. And below that is my previous blog post. And that's just kind of how the posts work. They just bump down from the top like you would expect a blog to do. And that's how they differ from pages which are static content. You don't add new ones behind there. I've just been given the five minute mark, so I'm going to speed up a bit. <laughs> plugins. Um, plugins unlock the true power of WordPress. When you add a plugin to your website, um, you're adding little bits of code that someone's created and you can this is where you can really customize your wordpress website to do whatever you want it to do i was going to go through two but since we pushed for time i'm just going to talk about yoast um yoast is one of the popular plugins i'm going to cover um it's a plugin which basically adds some S basic seo for your site um i'm not an seo expert but yoast really helps my website co come up on google um, and it's because it's so easy to use so I'm just going to give you an example of installing that. So plugins, add new. And to add a plugin, you'd just <laughs> search in this area. So I'm going to do Yoast, which keeps trying to correct to Toast. 
So I'm going to install some toast on my website. Activate that. Um, depending on the plugin you get, it might not be clear what it does straight away. Good places to look for what a plugin does is on your plugin section, you can do a view details there, which will give you links to the page where Yoast is featured on the WordPress.org site. And it usually has some documentation. So if you're not too sure what your plugin does when you activate it, you can usually find some helpful information there. Yoast is pretty straightforward in terms of where you can go because you can go in settings and set some basic SEO um, settings. But the main thing I use Yoast for, if we go back over to my WordCamp London post, which I just created, what Yoast does is it adds this section below the post content. It adds this section here. And this helps you make your, your pages more SEO friendly. So it asks you to set a focus keyword, which I'm going to put as WordCamp for the sake of this example. And you might have noticed when I set that keyword, this light turned green. And that's what you're about. It's all about getting this green light. If you don't have a green light there, you've got this feedback here about your post. So it's got problems with your SEO, things you can improve on. Some more improvements there. These are the bigger things to do. These are just some minor improvements. And these are things that are good about your post. So it gives you feedback on your post about what is what they think is good for your SEO and what is not so good. And you can kind of edit your post until all these flash green and you'll have a pretty SEO friendly page. Um, if it doesn't come up first ranking on Google, it's not necessarily, um, that might be the point where you want an SEO expert. Because, because I'm not an SEO expert, I use Yoast and does a nice job for me, makes my pages kind of turn up on Google. I get some comments sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's how Yoast works. Um, you can also set extra keywords and there's premium options. You can set things for social media. So you can use Facebook and Twitter to put your page up on there. And yeah, Yoast is really handy for that. Another popular plugin was Contact Form 7, which what Contact Form 7 does, I'm just going to talk about that real quick, is it um, gives you a new section in your dashboard. Yeah, gives you a new section in your dashboard. You click on that section. It gives you this template builder. And when you press, uh, when you press to create that contact form, it gives you a short tag, which... I said I weren't going to show, boys. It's so cool. <laughs> going to be really quick about it. Contact Form 7, install. Activate. OK, and that's added this contact section here with an example contact form. And what you'll see is when you click save, when you created a contact form, you get this thing in the blue in the blue box here, which is called a short tag. And lots of plugins create short tags. And what they do is you can just drag and drop content into your pages. So the contact page I created before, I can just drop that contact short code in. And it does this to my page, adds this really cool contact form. And how easy was that? This is why plugins are awesome because I didn't want to code that. That would have been painful. Um, just a few tips on choosing a good plugin. Um, something we get asked on support a lot is, how, how can I be sure that this plugin is good, this plugin is safe? Because anyone can submit a plugin to the WordPress repository. What I usually do to reassure them is remind them that anything you install through the plugin repository, so within your WordPress installation, that plugin would not be there if it's not been approved by someone from the WordPress.org plugin team. They check through the code, make sure it's safe, make sure that it actually works. And yeah, uh, just a few other things to check out. It's number of downloads, star rating. And we also at 34sp.com have made our own plugin called WP Fingerprint. And that checksums your plugin. So what it does is it looks at the 
it looks at the plugin file on your computer, on your website rather, and it compares it to the plugin in the repository to make sure the files match. And it's a way of making sure your plugin is not compromised, not hacked, it's completely safe. And yeah, that's just a way we try and keep on top and make sure that people have safe plugins on our hosting. Um, so feel free to check that out on the plugin repository if you'd like to. Um, I'll skip over media and galleries because we went through them. Um, some extra homework for you. Um, because I've gone through some of the real basics on creating and how to use the dashboard, um, some things I would recommend beginners take a look at is the Jetpack plugin because it's really good for beginners. It's a plugin with a lot of different features in it. You install it and you can tick things like add a contact form, add links to Facebook, um, automatically post stuff. It's really useful. So Jetpack's definitely a good plugin for beginners to look at. Talk to your hosting about getting an SSL certificate. If you have a contact form or any kind of um, data that you need protecting, get an SSL certificate so it's all encrypted, keeps your website safe. Definitely look at that. And if you want to be a bit more advanced, take a look at the custom post types plugin because it will really help you understand the difference between posts, pages, and you can create really unique content with it. It's a bit more of an advanced plugin, but when, you, when you're comfortable with the dashboard, check that one out because you'll learn so much more from it. And yeah, um, hopefully people found this helpful. I tried to rush through at the end there. Um, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>